Welcome back. We're down here at the Ohio River today, and we're going to be searching for ancient artifacts. And I'm going to explain how these artifacts are getting here and where they're coming from. And also, how we're able to find so many artifacts down here on these beaches of the Ohio River. And we got the full battle rattle today. We brought the sifter, we brought the shovel, and we even brought the scooper sifter here in uh, places that we can use it where the sand isn't quite so deep. And if you're seeing this video right now, then we did well, so stay with us. So I'm gonna take my shovel, and I'm gonna clear some of this mud out of here in this water so I can get my sifter in, and then we'll get started. And uh, we'll try to learn something today, so stay with me. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our shovel and we're gonna start sifting through this sand down to the hard packed clay layer because that's where everything likes to lay down under the sand. We'll start down here close to the water. That's where most of the concentrates usually are at. And then uh, we'll work our way up towards the uh, scooper sifter and the dock up there. I started digging right here, but that barge went by and the water filled in my hole. So uh, it's going to be just digging blind under this water right here, but there's a lot of stone under here. But look at this. I dug a sample hole right here and you can see the clay layer is down about 10 inches or so. It's a good bit of sand. It's a good bit of sand to take off of there. But as we go up that beach, it may get a little more shallow. It's just be a... It may just be a deep place right here in the sand. But there's a lot of stone under there. We got the sifter filled up once already. I'm going to shake it down, load it up again, shake it down, and then we'll check and see if there's anything in there. Once you get this overburdened sand off the top of here, this eight or 10 inches, you start hitting the uh, gravel laying down on that packed layer. Oh, that sounds good. A lot of gravel in there. You can see in just that little amount of dirt that we worked right there. Now we filled the sifter two or three times, but look at the stone that's underneath of this sand. And here's a good way to tell when you're on a good native site. You see these uh, pieces of cracked up sandstone, they're all red and fired. Well, they're red like that because they've been fired around a campfire or uh, maybe they were a part of a kiln or something. Uh, just let me show you. Hold on a second. Okay, we're over here at my neighbor's house. And uh, once in a while, him and his buddies, they sit around the fire pit here, tell Nom stories. But I want to show you something. Do you see how he's got these uh, sandstones stacked up here? Well, after repeated firing, like I was showing you there at the river, look at these stones now. You see how they're starting to turn red? Well, after repeated firing over and over and over, these stones will stay red forever. And that's what we're seeing down there at the river. And that's a good example right there. Okay, we're back. I see one down in this screen. Now, I don't know if it's whole or not, but I see the tip of maybe uh, an arrowhead or a dart point in here. Check this out and see if you see it. 
You see that right there sticking out from under that rock? Let's pull that out and see what it is. Oh, it's all there. Oh, that's real nice. It's a hunting projectile point. You can see it's made uh, on a flake on the back. It's completely flat on the back. And they only had to work one side of it to get it worked down. It's small enough, it looks like it could be a bow and arrow tip. We'll keep our finds right here in our case. That's one for today. Nice. Well, let's look through this some more because that one was kind of laying right out where we saw it immediately. I like to throw all these large stones way out there so you're not sifting them again in the future. Check through this stuff well because some of these artifacts are really small. There's some glass. Watch you don't get cut. And you'll find a lot of these too. Flint flakes where they were uh, making artifacts. Flint artifacts and projectile points. That's the debutage, the waste that they chipped off. Lots of flakes in here. Oh, oh, we got another one here. Hold on. Looks broken. Well, it's uh, it's suffered some damage, but it's made out of nice material. Looks like it would have been maybe a Jack's Reef, seeing how thin it is. And when I say Jack's Reef, I mean that's the uh, name of the point that Modern Man has given them. Probably 1,500 years old. They say that uh, the Jack's Reef was the first bow and arrow point. That's why they're so thin. Well, I'm not seeing anything else in this one. There's a large piece of flint. They were probably uh, knocking spalls off of that to make tools or projectile points. Well, this loaded up again. That was pretty fun. There's a railroad tie under here. I'll bet that thing's got a lot of stone packed in behind it. Load all those leaves and sticks off of there. We got something in here. I can see it right there. I haven't even gone through it yet. I can see part of it. Look right down in here. Can you see that? I can see part of it. Let's hope it's all there. Oh, yes. Look at this. It's another Jack's Reef point. Probably 1,200 to 1,500 years old. And a lot of these will take on like a pentagonal shape. As you can see, that one edge is uh, kind of angled like that. These age from around 1,200 to 1,500 years old. And they say that's the first bow and arrow point that was made. Before this, everything was thrown on a spear or a dart. And the points were a lot heavier. But when they got the bow and arrow, they needed something lighter. So their first option, they thought, well, we'll just make them thinner. Well, that worked pretty well, I would say. But eventually, they got smaller and smaller, and then just ended up with the uh, triangle points that weren't even notched for the bow and arrow. Oh, we're doing well. We're doing well. Well, let's look through the rest of this one, and then I'll explain to you how these artifacts are getting down here onto this beach. Oh, there's one. Here's one. Can you see it? Right there. Looks like it's got a tip fracture. This is a bow and arrow tip. This would have been the last projectile tips made by uh, Native Americans before the uh, Europeans showed up with metal. 
Now, although the tip is broken off of that, you can see just how thin it was. You could make these off of just a flake of flint if you had to. Very simple design, very uh, effective. Bow and arrow tip, the most modern one. I'm not seeing anything else in this one. Just some flint pieces. Let me just go over how all these artifacts are getting down here on this beach. Now I know it's hard to see because of all these weeds growing up here. But behind me, this is what we're looking at. Before the hydro dams were put in, the water used to be way out there. But now it's like a big full lake all the time. And before these dams were put in, the land was flat on the top like this, and then went gradually down to the water below down here. Now, when the dams were put in, it raised the water. Now it's just like a big lake. And every time it floods, it just lays up here on this earth and softens it up. And combined with the waves and everything, all this land up here has been cut in half like this. Every time it floods, it takes a little bit more off of this flat land up above where the natives were living. And all the artifacts are laying under the dirt here that got covered up over thousands of years or hundreds of years. And now, up here on the top, right in this area, is this area right here. Now this is flat land where natives lived for probably 13, 14,000 years. And you can see what I'm talking about right over here. This is the edge where it's just cut straight down. And everything under my feet right here along this edge will be going down onto that riverbank within a couple years or so, maybe sooner, depending on how many floods we have. But you can see right here how this is just cut straight down. And everything in this dirt right here that's getting washed right down onto the beach where we're finding it. And it's concentrated. That's a lot of earth to wash away down the river and leave all these artifacts behind. Right here, we would have been standing under about 10 or 12 feet of dirt back in that time. Every winter we get those floods, it washes those artifacts down a little more and a little more until they get right here on the water's edge. There's nothing to bring them any farther because that's as low as the water goes. And they'll sit there and wash back and forth right there at the water's edge. And I can tell this because I'm getting a lot of gravel right in this area, but the farther I go up that way, it's getting a little thin. So I think I'm just going to work my way down the beach under this pipe here, right on the water's edge where most of the concentrates are at, give us a better chance to find more stuff. Let's get back to digging. This place is loaded. I got two more in here. Look here. Here's a nice one right here. Let me get you in the sun so you can see it better. Here we go. Look right here. Looks all there. It is. Oh, that's a nice one. Look at that. It's all there, complete point. Might be a sharpened down hope well. But look right down in here is another one. Can you see it right there? It's white. Oh, nice. It also looks like a hope well point. Resharpened. Very nice piece. Now I know that a lot of y'all are wondering how I know the age 
and the uh, culture that these points come from. I study this stuff a lot. And these points were found with known items that were able to be carbon dated. You can't carbon date a stone, it's just too old. Carbon dating only goes back, I think, like 60,000 years or something like that. And this here is the book that I use, The Overstreet Indian Arrowheads Identification and Price Guide. It's a very good book. It breaks down all the regions in here and gives several different examples of each point in different stages of resharpening. And you can see here our Jack's Reef point would fall right into this category. You can even see the uh, pentagonal side on that one uh, on that left side of it. But this is what this is. Jack's Reef corner notch point. And it gives the date late woodland to Mississippi 1500 to a thousand years before present. And I think they're calling present day like 1952 is the date they're going by there. Oh yeah, we're getting a good collection here. And I think these two are Hopewell points. I was sifting this down. Look what we got in here. Oh, here he is. It's a little leatherback turtle. Take off, buddy. There he goes. <laughs> oh, man, he stinks. Pew. Man, y'all ain't gonna believe this. I almost didn't see this because I was digging down into the clay. Look at this. Can you see that? It's just sticking up right there, the same color as that uh, clay. Let's pull it up. Oh, I think it's a double notcher. I thought it had a double notch on it, but it doesn't. That's just some... Uh, Minor chipping out on the edges of it there. That's a nice one. Look at that. Like a cream color. That's a hard ID right there. I can't match it up with anything in the book. Uh, basically, probably they don't have an example sharpened this way. I don't know. That's a hard call on that. Nice one there. Another nice one. And a lot of guys seem to think that in this uh, Overstreet book that they only put the best examples in there. I know one guy that goes on there and brags, well, I got better ones than this. Well, that's not what they're shooting at. They're shooting to show you the different styles of resharpening because they weren't all resharpened the same. And once a point gets sharpened down so far, the characteristics start going away in it, and it's really hard to tell what it is. I know I just said this, but... Uh, Y'all ain't going to believe this. Where I was shoveling before, I just happened to look down. Look at this. Right here where I was shoveling a couple hours ago. Look right there. There's a base sticking out right here. Let's pull it out. Oh, I think it's all there. Yeah. Looks like an Adena point, maybe 2,000 years old. Very nice. And you see how it's got this favored curve on this one side as opposed to the other one? I think this was a little knife blade. You can clearly see that they favored that one side over the other to give it that kind of a knife curve there. Adena knife blade. Probably 2,000 years old. Sweet. We got another one down in here, but it's broken. You can see it right there. It's made out of Flint Ridge from Ohio. Pink and white. But busted off right here on the back. This would be an old break right here this was broken in ancient times a way you can tell on this there's a couple of ways you can tell look at the broken part 
and then look at the side of it. If the broken part is a lot lighter color, well then it doesn't have the uh, age to it that the patina has built on the outside. That, that means it's broken recently. Also, you can tell by, if you feel the edges of the brake, if they're really, really sharp, it was probably broken recently. But if they're kind of not so sharp and dulled off, probably an old brake. And this one here has a small uh, fossil inside is what caused it to break on there. I would say that it was just laying under the ground uh, against another stone or something and just the uh, freezing and thawing before it was below the uh, frost line probably snapped it. Now the other half's probably laying around here somewhere, but uh, odds of finding it, very slim, very slim. I don't see anything else in this one. Uh, that was Nick Nolte, not Gary Busey. No, that was Gary Busey. Nah. Gary Busey. It was. No, it wasn't. I'm digging down here in the water because uh, there seems to be a lot more stone gathered right on this water's edge, like I said. So I'm just gonna stay in the water right through here because that's where I'm getting most stuff. Y'all ain't gonna believe this. We got another Jack's Reef, it looks like. Look down in here. Look, can you see it? It's just here. Oh, sweet. It's another Jack's Reef corner notch, I think. It's got a little popped out place right there like it was in a fire or a freeze popped or something. Just a little damage off the uh, bottom of that base. That's really nice. Another Jack's Reef. See how thin it is. Yeah, we're on the Jack's Reefs today. Maybe there was a whole pouch of them lost there. I don't know. Another dandy. Go over there and look for that bucket. We could use that. I am, I am. Now these points, a lot of people think, well, they shot them on a bow or a dart and they lost them. How could they lose that many arrows or darts? Well, that's not the case. You know, I would say 99% of this stuff was just things that were misplaced around the house. I mean, how many times have you dropped something in your grass and you couldn't find it and you never did find it? Well, a couple years later, it's under this much dirt and leaves. Thousand years later, it's under a foot of dirt. And it's hard to tell up on that flat how many villages arose and then just died out over time. Probably a lot of people lived there. I would say it had countless citizens over thousands of years. Had to have as much stuff as we find down here. Let's get back at it. We got one in the scooper sifter. Look down in here. Can you see it? Let me set this down. Right down in there, it's just there. There's a fishing weight, a sinker. Look at this. Oh, nice. Again, I think this is a little used up knife blade. See how it favors that one side, how it's curved like that? They've just used that up to nothing. And I mean, uh, 
once that's in the handle hafted in the handle and glued in there they don't want to take that out they're going to use it till it's this big before they replace it with a new one you ever use an exacto knife i mean the blades on those aren't very big but they're very handy nice piece that's a whole little collection right there mostly jack's reef stuff and a sinker we're drying up we went three screens with nothing let's check this one there's a brick flint oh there we go there we go hold on what is this looks like a little knife blade of sort it's not broken it's worked all around just a little uh used up knife blade again a lot of knives found a lot of knives I don't see anything else in there. Just a uh, bunch of flakes. Flint everywhere in here. Well, we moved a lot of sand out of here today and found some nice artifacts. We're going to go ahead and get out of here. And uh, we'll catch you next time. I still say that was Gary Busey anyway. It was Nick Nolte. You all come back now.